Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this again. I'm Stan Gable, and I've been doing cybersecurity now for 30 plus years. Most of you are less than 30 years old. So what I'm about to impart, what I'm about to tell you is something that is, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's what I'm good at. It's something that drives me almost on a daily basis. You need to find something that you're passionate about. You need to find something that you would actually say, hey, I'm not going to tell my boss this, but guess what? I would do this for less money, or I would do this for free, because it's in my heart. So let's talk, if you will. The first thing I want to say is that, so I can level the field, if you will. I want to talk about workforce development. talk about workforce development. Specifically, I want to talk about cybersecurity workforce development. I think it's a wonderful field. I think you should give it some serious thought. I think you're capable. I think you're ready for this kind of thing. Once again, I've been piddling around with this whole thing for about 30 plus years or so. I've been a teacher. I've been a researcher. I did cryptography, you know, hidden words and things like that. I flew in the United States Air Force. Yeah. I've done all of those things. And, and I must say, if I had to rank them, if I actually had to prioritize them, I'd say that mm, teaching is my fun, is my real base. I love giving information. I love sharing information. I love teaching folks. I love exciting people so they go on and do bigger and better things. And I'd probably say second would be something along the lines of, oh, I don't know, flying for the United States Air Force. That was really a trip. Getting to wear a flight suit a la Top Gun, oh, man. That was, oh, my goodness. I can't tell you how much fun it was to get up each and every day and actually pierce the sky. Thank you. Also, if you take a peep here, we're talking about a, 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 a sweet mixture or a combination of things. When you talk about security, from this day forward, I want you to think of it this way. There can be physical security, logical security, and human element security. I trace and track people. I protect data. I read firewalls. I set up firewalls and things like that. I make sure that I protect and I defend our most precious asset in most companies, which is our data, our information, our personally identifiable information. If you really take a look at it, what I've done over time to, to, to accumulate or to add up all this time that I'm talking about, I was in the military. I was in private sector as well as public sector. Okay? I'd like to take, well, I'd like to steal for a minute. Well, watch out, right? I've already used the bad word there. I'd like to borrow a word or a phrase, if you will. How many of you have actually seen the movie Taken? Liam Neeson said something in that movie that is just burned in my mind like you wouldn't believe. I have built a particular set of skills. Remember when he said that? Wasn't it chilling at the time he said that? As he was talking on the phone to that person? I thought so. But what I have done is I built a particular set of skills. I bought together knowledge, skills, ability, aptitude, and attitude to become a cybersecurity professional. I have been trained and educated in cybersecurity. That's a combination that can't be beaten. That is to say, I went through training. I was certified. I've been educated, received degrees in these things, and I do this every single day. So when I teach people like yourselves, it's not something like where, well, I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night and I read a good book on it. Now I'm going to teach it. Not so. When I leave you or when I left you, I actually go do this kind of thing. But now, there's an announcement. Take a look. There's an announcement. It's not a video, but it's a part of the bullets that say announcement. I'm retired now. I'm done. I'm taking those 32, 33 years with me. I'm vacating a seat. I'm stepping out of these shoes. And we need someone, maybe someone out here, to fill this, to sit in the seat and do these kind of things. Let's talk about how we can develop you, how we can develop our workforce to fill those kind of shoes and things like that. 
the big question is always this. Do we really need cybersecurity? Do you think we do? I know we do. I absolutely know we do. Because the numbers don't lie, ladies and gentlemen. Over 800 million records have been exposed, lost, stolen, left behind, leaked. Over 800 million records since 2005. Now here's something that'll, that'll, that'll cause the hair on the back of your neck to stand up. Over 800 million have been reported as lost or stolen. There's millions upon millions of others where people have never told us about it, do not want to divulge that they have been hacked, and really don't know exactly how many records they've lost. But suffice it to say, those who have reported that they've lost the information is coming somewhere in about 800 plus million records. Now you're probably saying to yourself, oh, big deal, big deal, 800 million records stolen. So what can they do with that? They can build a new you, as a matter of fact. A single page of your social security number, credit card information, and private or personally identifiable information is worth about $20,000 on the open black market. 20,000 bucks. Now you're probably saying to yourself, oh man, I'm in the wrong field again. <laughs> no, no. Each record cost to respond and recover from somewhere around $145 per record. Now you do the math real quick. I wish we had the Jeopardy thing going on right now. Boom, 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 boom. As you take off your shoes and start typing in and using your fingers and all that, it's a big number. I'll just put it that way. $145 per record. And every time you hear about it on the radio, or you watch it on TV, or you watch it on your smart devices, when was the last time someone said to you, I lost one record? We don't lose one record. We lose tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of records at a time. So you do the math on that kind of thing. They tell us, and I'm talking about some rather learned individuals, researchers, if you will, that by 2020, we're going to have an opening or a need for 1.5 million cyber uh, workers. That is everything from people that build computers all the way to maintaining computers, to architects, to engineers, to cybersecurity people. 1.5 million. That's a lot too. Okay? So ask yourself the question. If it's so exciting and it's so sexy, why are we going to have a gap of 1.5 million? If it's all that good, why? Take a peep. One of the reasons why is because to get your foot in the door and to become a cybersecurity cyber workforce uh, individual, you've got to have a particular set, help me, of skills. You can't just show up off the street and say, I have a real want and a desire to be a cybersecurity warrior. I want to be a cyber ninja and expecting a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in the first year. If you have no experience, no education, no knowledge, no skills, and no marketable abilities. You've got to have those things, okay? The second reason why we have a 1.5 million shortage is because there's old people like me. It's an aging workforce. I've been doing this for 30 some years. I wanna go on to the next adventure. I wanna learn how to cook a brisket in under eight hours. I want to learn what are the, base the best tastes out there and things like that, yeah. And the third thing is it says right here, well, there's going to be a lot of you in the crowd that say to yourself, well, you know what, Stan, I really didn't want to be a cybersecurity professional. I think I want to be something like, um, oh, I don't know, maybe I want to be an architect or an engineer or something else. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. So those are the reasons why we have such a shortage. So the bottom line about workforce development is this. Take this definition with you. Write this down. Workforce development means I'm going to prepare you to fill a role in responsibilities within my company, whether the company is private, public, or military. I'm going to train you
to sit in that seat for the role. You've got to go through that because you can't. You can't handle multi-million dollar contracts and not have the KSAs, knowledge, skills, and abilities. You've got to have those things. So start now. Start now in school. Start learning science, technology, engineering, mathematics, building the foundation, if you will. On top of all of that, on top of one of those degrees, on top of that actual education, you're going to slide cybersecurity in there. What makes a cybersecurity professional? What are they made up of? They're made up of what? Knowledge, skills, and abilities. They have a tremendous foundation in IT, a tremendous foundation in networking, a tremendous foundation in security. Those three things together will let you not only knock on the door, but actually get in through the door and secure one of these jobs that I'm talking about. So how do we do such a thing? Once again, STEM courses. Go to a college that has a STEM program. We also do awareness, training, and education. Three different things, ladies and gentlemen. Awareness, training, and education. Uh, also, we want you to increase your KSAs. When you're applying for these jobs, there are people that are sitting across from you like me. They're going to ask you some very straightforward, basic questions. One thing that's not mentioned up here, ladies and gentlemen, that I do want to bring to your attention. When you show up, the old adage is so true, you only get one chance at a first impression. I'm not only looking for KSA, knowledge, skills, and abilities, I'm looking at your attitude. I'm looking at your appetite. No, not for barbecue, but your appetite as far as your ability to what? Soak in and take in what I'm about to teach you. Go on this journey I'm about to go. Let's talk about KSAs real quick, okay? Knowledge, skills, and abilities. What is knowledge? Knowledge is something that you pick up while you're sitting in school, whether it be in 12 or 10th, 11th, or 12th grade, whether it be uh, a, a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, whether it be undergraduate, whether it be graduate, or whether it be a PhD. You pick that up while in school. What are skills? Those are demonstrable. Demo demonstrable talents that you may have. I have the skill to write code. I have the skill to secure networks and infrastructures. And what are abilities? If you have the skills, then you demonstrate it. And that's your abilities. And I can't teach you attitude. We all have attitude. And some of us have different attitudes than the others, right? Of course we do. But a positive attitude and aptitude, and appetite as well. That's a KSA. That's enough about that. So what can we do while we're still in high school? We can seek those STEM programs. We can lay that foundation of networking, IT, and security. We can focus on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is your STEM. We can talk to our math teachers, we can talk to our engineering teachers, we can talk to our technology teachers and our science teachers. We can take these courses and we can excel in them, getting ready to take our next step towards either a technical school or a college or university. Also, what we want to do is make sure that the STEM curriculum has the proper cybersecurity uh, flavor, if you will, or emphasis or focus and things like that. You can do that right now. You don't have to wait until you're, you're, you're sitting at uh, Georgia Tech or you're sitting at the University of Georgia saying, hmm, I wish I had done a little bit more math before I got here or a little bit more technology before I got here. Do it now. In college, in universities, this is where I came from before, I came to the, before I'm doing, uh, uh, in this position that I'm in right now. I came from the Board of Regents, the University System of Georgia. In higher education, they're ready and waiting for you. They're standing there with their STEM programs, with their emphasis in security, their emphasis in security architecture, security engineering, security analysts. They're waiting for you. But you've got to have that foundation. Start your foundation now and build from there. Build a great one. 
So I'd like to say this, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion. I'm going to go home today and cook a barbecue, cook a, 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 some ribs. That's, that's, a, that's a foregone conclusion there. We know that already. But what can you do? It's quite simple. Once again, take a real serious look at cybersecurity. Take a real serious look at developing your knowledge, skills, and abilities. Seek out more information. Be curious. Build those KSAs that I'm talking about and things like that. I could go through this list up here. I've memorized the list. But the bottom line about it is it has to come from you. And I know you can do it. Build that foundation. Come join me. Are you ready for this? Some of you are saying, well, I really don't know if this is something that I want to do. You really want to know what you should do? Here it is. And here's the formula. Three things. Do something that you're passionate about. Can't you see the passion in what I'm talking about? Do something you're passionate about. Number two, do something that you can be, number one, the best in the world at. Number three, and the final thing, do something they're going to pay you that satisfies you, that drives your economic engine. Real quick again, something you're passionate about, something you can be the best at the world in, and something that drives your economic engine. Think about it. And please, hurry up, because I don't want to burn any barbecue. I need to step away from that other job and become the pit master that I want to be. Thank you all so much. <clears throat>